photosensitive epilepsy is a form of epilepsy in which seizures are triggered by visual stimuli that form patterns in time or space, such as flashing lights, bold, regular patterns, or regular moving patterns. Signs and Symptoms People with PSE experience epileptiform seizures upon exposure to certain visual stimuli. The exact nature of the stimulus or stimuli that triggers the seizures varies from one patient to another, as does the nature and severity of the resulting seizures. Many PSE patients experience an aeroeara euro or feel odd sensations before the seizure occurs, and this can serve as a warning to a patient to move away from the trigger stimulus. The visual trigger for a seizure is generally cyclic, forming a regular pattern in time or space. Flashing lights or rapidly changing or alternating images are examples of patterns in time that can trigger seizures, and these are the most common triggers. Static spatial patterns such as stripes and squares may trigger seizures as well, even if they do not move. In some cases, the trigger must be both spatially and temporally cyclic, such as a certain moving pattern of bars. Several characteristics are common in the trigger stimuli of many PSE patients. The patterns are usually high in luminance contrast. Contrasts in color alone are rarely triggers for PSE. Some patients are more affected by patterns of certain colors than by patterns of other colors. The exact spacing of a pattern in time or space is important and varies from one individual to another. A patient may readily experience seizures when exposed to lights that flash seven times per second, but may be unaffected by lights that flash twice per second or twenty times per second. Stimuli that fill the entire visual field are more likely to cause seizures than those that appear in only a portion of the visual field. Stimuli perceived with both eyes are usually much more likely to cause seizures than stimuli seen with one eye only. Some patients are more sensitive with their eyes closed. Others are more sensitive with their eyes open. Sensitivity is increased by alcohol consumption, sleep deprivation, illness, and other forms of stress. Television Television has traditionally been the most common source of seizures in PSE. For patients with PSE, it is especially hazardous to view television in a dark room, at close range, or when the television is out of adjustment and is showing a rapidly flickering image. Modern digital television sets that cannot be maladjusted in this way and refresh the image on the screen at very high speed present less of a risk than older television sets. Some PSE patients, especially children, may exhibit an uncontrollable fascination with television images that trigger seizures, to such an extent that it may be necessary to physically keep them away from television sets. Some patients self-induce seizures by waving their fingers in front of their eyes in front of bright light or by other means. Some UK television broadcasters and studios now screen content through the Harding FPA test, an objective standard of assessment of potential to trigger seizures in the susceptible population. Television programs, in some cases, specific television programs featuring certain types of visual stimuli have provoked seizures in a small minority of television viewers, including some viewers with no prior history of seizures of any kind. The Dennis Senchi Porygon episode of Poker Copyright Mon is the most frequently cited example. Broadcast of the program in Japan, which includes strong flickering scenes, produced seizures in a surprising number of viewers, even though the proportion of viewers affected was extremely low. BBC News anchors warn viewers if the clips they are about to show contain flash photography. Fluorescent lighting, when functioning correctly, mains powered fluorescent lighting has a flicker rate sufficiently high to reduce the occurrence of problems. However, a faulty fluorescent lamp can flicker at a much lower rate and trigger seizures. Newer high efficiency compact fluorescent lamps with electronic ballast circuits operate at much higher frequencies not normally perceivable by the human eye, though defective lights can still cause problems. The Job Accommodation Network lists reduction or elimination of fluorescent lighting as an appropriate accommodation for many conditions including epilepsy. The Canadian Department of Labor states that the newer lights are problematic for fewer people. Video games and pinball machines The first case of epileptiform seizures related to a video game was reported in 1981. Since then, many cases of seizures triggered by VGs were reported, not only in photosensitive, 
but also in non-photosensitive children and adolescents with epilepsy. Specific preventive measures concerning the physical characteristics of images included in commercially available VGs can lead in the future to a clear decrease of this problem. Risks can be reduced through measures such as keeping a safe distance away from the screen. While computer displays in general present very little risk of producing seizures in PSE patients, video games with rapidly changing images or highly regular patterns can produce seizures, and video games have increased in importance as triggers as they have become more common. Some people with no prior history of PSE may first experience a seizure while playing a video game. Often the sensitivity is very specific, for example, it may be a specific scene in a specific game that causes seizures, and not any other scenes. Despite this, there are questions on the dangers of this, and calls for testing all video games for causing PSE. Laws requiring PSE warnings be displayed on packages and or stores have been proposed and legal firms are keeping an eye on developments. The Star Wars episode I Pinball Machine, which had video components, included an epilepsy warning label as did Attack from Mars. Web design, as with video games, rapidly changing images or highly regular patterns such as flashing banner ads or irregular fonts can trigger seizures in people with photosensitive epilepsy. Two sets of guidelines exist to help web designers produce content that is safe for people with photosensitive epilepsy. The World Wide Web Consortium, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines version 2.0, produced in 2008 specifies that content should not flash more than three times in any one second period. However it does allow flashing above this rate if the flashing is below the general and red flashing thresholds. In the United States, websites provided by federal agencies are governed by Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act. The Act says that pages shall be designed to avoid causing the screen to flicker with a frequency greater than 2 Hz and less than 55 Hz. The 508 regulations are currently being updated and are expected to use the same criteria at WCAG 2.0 when finished. A free tool for evaluating web content for flashing called the Photosensitive Epilepsy Analysis Tool is available from the Trace and D Center at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Diagnosis Diagnosis may be made by noting the correlation between exposure to specific visual stimuli and seizure activity. More precise investigation can be carried out by combining an EEG with a device producing intermittent photic stimulation. The IPS device produces specific types of stimuli that can be controlled and adjusted with precision. The testing physician adjusts the IPS device and looks for characteristic anomalies in the EEG, such as photoparoxysmal response, that are consistent with PSE and or may herald the onset of seizure activity. The testing is halted before a seizure actually occurs. Sometimes diagnostic indicators consistent with PSE can be found through provocative testing with IPS, and yet no seizures may ever occur in real-life situations. Many people will show PSE-like abnormalities in brain activity with sufficiently aggressive stimulation, but they never experience seizures and are not considered to have PSE. Treatment and Prognosis no cure is available for PSE, although the sensitivity of some patients may diminish over time. Medical treatment is available to reduce sensitivity, with sodium valproat being commonly prescribed. Patients can also learn to avoid situations in which they might be exposed to stimuli that trigger seizures and or take steps to diminish their sensitivity if they are unavoidably exposed. These actions together can reduce the risk of seizures to almost zero for many PSE patients. Some PSE patients have trigger stimuli that are so specific that they are never likely to encounter them in real life. Their PSE may only be discovered by accident in an unusual situation or during examination for other complaints. Society and Culture The effect of stroboscopic lighting became apparent to the general public when it first became popular in discotheques during the 1960s. Many authorities responded by regulating the permissible frequency ranges of flashing lights in public places. Photosensitive epilepsy was again brought to public attention in late 1997 when the poker copyright Mon episode Innocenti Porygon was broadcast in Japan, 
showing a sequence of flickering images that triggered seizures simultaneously in hundreds of susceptible viewers. In March 1997, the 25th episode of an anime series called Y.A.T. Anshin. Ursha Ryoka caused a similar incident, when a reported four children were taken to hospitals by ambulances after viewing a scene with red and white flashing colors. In March 2008, the anonymous group of hackers was claimed to be behind an attack on a forum for epilepsy sufferers. The anonymous hackers in turn blamed the Church of Scientology for the attacks, saying they were falsified to hurt their image. The attacks first consisted of GIF images flashing at high speeds that were hidden in discussion threads with innocuous sounding titles. Later attacks redirected web browsers to a page with a more complex image designed to trigger seizures in both photosensitive and pattern sensitive epileptics. The technology website Word News considered it to be possibly the first computer attack to inflict physical harm on the victims. 2012 London Olympics An animated segment of a film promoting the 2012 London Olympics was blamed for triggering seizures in people with photosensitive epilepsy. The charity Epilepsy Action received telephone calls from people who had seizures after watching the film on television and online. In response, it was reported that London 2012 Olympic Committee removed the offending segment from its website. References Bureau, M. Hirsch, E. Vigavano, F. Epilepsy and Video Games. Epilepsia. 45 SUPPL1. 24 a euro 6 doi 10.1111 per julo 013-9580.2004.451 3 x PMID a 14706041 a Further reading Harding Graham A Al photosensitive epilepsy MacKeith Press London External links Harding FPA broadcast flash and pattern analyzer Photosensitive Epilepsy at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings, Reflex Epilepsy by Halayan, Joseph F. 